In this video, we will give a quick tour of the options available in NIME for data visualization and interactive exploration. We will use the airline dataset, which is downloadable from this address here, and we will run the same data visualization twice, the first time from the web browser, and then the second time from within the NIME Analytics platform. Let's start with a web browser. Let's connect to a NIME server, a physical NIME server or a server on the cloud from a web browser. Let's log in. And now let's start our application. The first page contains some basic charts. There is a pie chart, a bar chart, and below there is a table with the basic statistical measures. You can mouse over the chart to get details of the pie slices and of the chart bars. The pie chart shows the percentage of flights for each airline. The bar chart shows the departure delay ratio for each one of the airlines for 2007 and for 2008. These charts are interactive. So this button here allows to change, for example, the title. allows to change the subtitles and other few representation options. And here, for example, I can also change the x-axis and the y-axis columns so that I can explore my data set from different point of view. Below, we have a table with the basic statistical measures for all the data dimensions. The last thing I would like to notice in this page is the title here. This title is a piece of text or a piece of HTML code, whatever you choose when you design the page. Let's continue now to the next charts. Here, we are first asked to select the year and the month for the data to display. I could choose, for example, July, June, and May for 2007 or 2007 and 2008. I choose May 2007. In this page, I visualize the results of the previous selection. First, with a sumverse chart, then with a line plot and a stacked plot, and finally with a box plot. The sumverse chart helps me with the multivariate analysis. Here I have all the data for airline AA, which are delayed, all the data for May 2007, airline AA, which are delayed and leaving on a Saturday, and they represent the 0.5% of the total number of flights. Here I have the data for United Airlines leaving on May 2007 on Thursdays and that are not delayed, and they represent the 2.81% of the total number of flights, and so on. I can also select some data, so for example, this group of data, or this group of data, or this group of data. I can change a few options of the chart, as usual, the title, the subtitle. I can decide if I want to display the legend or not, and so other options of the chart. I can also zoom and analyze deeper some groups of data. The line plot and the stacked plot both show the average arrival delay by these three airlines. I have some interactivity here as well. I can isolate some groups of data. I can change the kind of interpolation. and I can change a number of other plot settings. Finally, the box plot shows the average arrival delays in quantile boxes. Some interactivity is possible here as well. We have built this page in two steps. First, we selected the data and then we built the graphics. We can also combine the two steps in one page only. Let's see. In this page, I have two sliders here at the top. This slider selects the flight departure times, and this slider selects 
demands. Then I have a scatter plot, a table with the list of the airlines, and a table with the details of the flight. If I change the selected departure times in this slider, then the scatter plot changes accordingly. If I change the month, then the scatter plot also changes. I can select one airline here and the corresponding points in the scatter plot are also selected. I can decide to only show the selected rows and then I'm going to end up with only the flights for airline UA. I can add MQ, I can add AA, I can add YV, I can remove YV and so on. The whole thing is interactive. Here I have the details for each flight. So let's suppose that I want to show only the selected flights. Right, so here I see only the UA flight. If I remove UA, I'm going to see only the MQ flight and below there are the AA flights. Let's remove also MQ and I'm going to have only AA. Let's remove AA and let's go back to only having YV and so on. In the scatter plot, I can also change the column displayed on the x-axis and the column displayed on the y-axis. This allows me to investigate the data on different dimensions. Let's move now to the next page. Here I have a network graph visualization. The center point is Chicago's airport. The landing nodes are the arrival airports. The node size is the number of flights connecting Chicago to that airport. This graph is a multi-connection graph. Each arrival airport is connected to the center through one or more edges, and each edge is an airline. The edge thickness is the number of flights from that airline along that connection. Also here we have some interactivity. I can change some options for the node, the title, the subtitle, the layout, and so on. And I can also select some of the nodes and move them around. I can move around the workflow. I can select some of the nodes and move the whole group somewhere else. San Francisco here, for example, let's move it here. Let's take a small one and so on. In the second part of this page, I have a parallel coordinate plot. Coordinates are the various types of delays. Colorful lines are again the airlines. Again, here some interactivity exploration is also possible. To finish this tour through the web browser, we have the flights represented over a US map. And we conclude with a little report with two pie charts, the bar chart and a word cloud. All this graphical exploration on the web browser is mainly for the end user, since it allows an interactive exploration of the data without coding or workflow experience needed. The same graphical exploration, though it's possible at the workflow level. Let's open the workflow. This is the workflow behind the sequence of pages that we have seen on the web portal. This meta node here visualizes the basic graphics in the first page. Remember, this meta node selects the month and the year and passes the selection to the next meta node. The next meta node visualizes the sunburst chart the line plot and the stack plot and the box plot 
the next meta node produces and visualizes the page with the two selection sliders and the scatter plot and the table. This node produces the network graph and the parallel coordinate plot. And finally, this node produces the US map and the flights over the US. All these nodes contain specific JavaScript-based visualization nodes, like these two here, that you can find here in the node repository. This is the node that produces the text or the HTML text on the web page. The nodes data to report send data and images to the reporting tool. NIME integrates BERT, Tableau and Spotfire as reporting tools. Summarizing, we have shown some of the possible visualization techniques for an interactive data exploration. We have shown them first on a web browser for the end users, then inside a workflow for the NIME and data science experts, and finally on a static report for the managers.